Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or serotonin-specific reuptake inhibitor SSRIs, are a class of chemical compounds that have contributed to the major advances as antidepressants where they have revolutionized the treatment of depression and other psychiatric disorders. The SSRIs are therapeutically useful in the treatment of panic disorder PD, post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, social anxiety disorder also known as social phobia, obsessive compulsive disorder OCD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder PMDD, and anorexia. There is also clinical evidence of SSRI's efficiency in the treatment of the negative symptoms of schizophrenia and their ability to prevent cardiovascular diseases. SSRIs primarily inhibit serotonin transporter CERT, in the brain and have negligible effects on dopamine transporter DAT, and norepinephrine transporter NET. Inhibiting the binding of the neurotransmitter, serotonin 5-HT, to CERT results in increased 5-HT concentration in the synaptic cleft leading to increased binding of 5-HT to postsynaptic receptors which results in improvement of depression symptoms. Today, SSRIs have dominated the market of antidepressants and are recommended by the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence NICE, as a first-line treatment of depression, because they typically have fewer adverse effects than other type of antidepressants with the same effects effectiveness. Development history Before the discovery of SSRI drugs the treatment for mood disorders were relatively limited. Now, however there are dozens of antidepressants on the market for the treatment of depression. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors MAOIs, and tricyclic antidepressants TCAs, were the first drugs to be developed for the treatment of depression, dating back to the early 1950s. Because of their undesirable adverse effect profile and high potential for toxicity, due to their non-selective pharmacological effects, strict regimens were for taking the drugs which limited their use. Because of this, researchers looked for other alternatives with similar effectiveness but fewer adverse effects e.g. drugs that did not cause cardiac conduction abnormalities in overdoses or had the tendency to cause seizures, which led to the discovery of the SSRI drugs. The SSRIs are the most significant class of antidepressants marketed in recent years and make one of the major medicinal discoveries of the last few decades. SSRIs were the first drugs to establish beyond doubt a pathophysiological role for 5-HT in effective illnesses and in the broad spectrum of anxiety disorders. Likewise, they were the first to confirm the inhibition of neurotransmitter reuptake as an important therapeutic principle. The SSRIs are the first rationally designed class of psychotropic medications. The strategy behind rational drug design is to develop a new drug that is capable of affecting a specific biological target, or in this case a special neural site of action, uptake pumps, receptors, while trying to avoid effects on other site of actions. The goal in such development is to produce pharmacological agents that are more efficacious, safer and better tolerated than older medications. An initial success was achieved when medicinal chemists set out in search of the ideal SSRI with the chemical synthesis of zimelidine figure 1 from the antihistamine drug bromfeniramine which exhibited selective inhibition of 5-HT reuptake with minimal inhibition of norepinephrine nay reuptake Most importantly zimelidine did not come with the adverse effect profile as the TCAs and therefore it became the template for the second generation SSRIs Zimelidine was the first SSRI to be marketed, but several cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome were associated with the use of the drug which led to withdrawal from the market in 1983. Subsequently, several non-tricyclic SSRIs were discovered and marketed. Fluoxetine, which was FDA approved in 1987 and is usually thought to be the first SSRI to be marketed, paved the way for the next generation of SSRIs and was thought to be some kind of prototype. Introduction of fluoxetine to the market is hailed as a miracle drug for the treatment of depression because it had fewer adverse effects, simpler dosing strategies and greater margin of safety when overdoses were consumed and thus it had better adherence, compared to the older antidepressants TCAs and MAOIs. Since then the number of drugs in the SSRI class has become bigger and they are now 6-fluoxetine, paroxetine, citalopram, escitalopram, sertraline and fluvoxamine, as demonstrated in Table 1. Table 1 SSRI drugs used to treat depression. Mechanism of action 
Precise mechanism of antidepressant activity of SSRIs remains somewhat uncertain, but a number of biochemical functions associated with SSRI treatment have been established. SSRIs primarily inhibit CERT in the brain and have negligible effects on DAD and NET. The SSRIs also have less affinity for alpha-1, alpha-2, H1 and muscarinic receptors, which might explain the differences of adverse events between TCAs and SSRIs, although SSRIs arrive rapidly to the brain after administration and the effects on 5-HT reuptake can be measured instantly, it takes about two to four weeks to get therapeutic effects. The SSRIs have very high and selective affinity for CERT and after administration they inhibit CERT immediately. CERT inhibition is implicated in the antidepressant activity of SSRIs, 70-80% inhibition of CERT is usually necessary to induce antidepressant effects and higher dosage does not induce greater antidepressant effects for average patients. Higher dosage does, however, increase the incidence and severity of adverse events associated with excessive 5-HT reuptake inhibition. SSRIs prevent 5-HT from binding to CERT which prevents absorption of 5-HT back into the presynapse terminal, where it is metabolized by monoamine oxidase or stored in secretory vesicles. As a result, the 5-HT concentration increases at the somatodendritic area of the 5-HT neuron but not so much at the axon terminal area demonstrated in Figure 2. This increase in 5-HT concentration causes desensitization of somatodendritic 5-HT1A autoreceptors. When these 5-HT1A autoreceptors have been downregulated, they will no longer restrict the impulse flow of the 5-HT neuron. The impulse flow is turned on and as a result 5-HT is released at the axon terminal. However, this increase of 5-HT does not happen quickly compared to the increase of 5-HT at the somatodendritic area of the 5-HT neuron. This delay is caused by the time it takes 5-HT to downregulate 5-HT1A autoreceptors and turn on the neuro-impulse flow of the 5-HT neuron. This delay can explain the reason why antidepressants do not have effect on depression immediately. This can also be the reason why the antidepressant mechanisms can be connected to the increasing neuro-impulse flow from 5-HT neurons, whereas the concentration of 5-HT increases at the axon terminal before SSRIs start to work properly. When SSRIs have 1 inhibited the reuptake pump, 2 increased somatodendritic 5-HT, 3 desensitized somatodendritic 5-HT1A autoreceptors, 4 turned on the impulse flow and 5 increased the release of 5-HT from axon terminal, the last step might be desensitization of postsynaptic 5-HT receptors. This desensitization could be the reason for reduction of adverse effects of SSRIs as tolerance develops. Adverse effects Although generally well tolerated and numerous advantages over other antidepressants, SSRIs are not devoid of adverse effects. The adverse effects of SSRIs are usually predictable from a knowledge of their pharmacology and are dose-related. Such adverse effects are gastrointestinal dysfunction, nausea, diarrhea, epigastric discomfort, effects on the central nervous system, CNS, anxiety, fatigue, tremor, anticholinergic effects, dry mouth, blurred vision, drowsiness, difficulty in urination, and sexual dysfunction, anorgasmia or delayed ejaculation. Occasionally symptoms of sexual dysfunction persist after discontinuation of SSRIs. SSRI's adverse effects are generally mild and temporary and are more of a discomfort than a serious threat in terms of systemic toxicity. Therefore, the adverse effect profile of the SSRIs may offer certain therapeutic advantages in the management of depression. Pharmacology SSRIs are well absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract and reach peak plasma levels within 1 to 8 hours. During absorption SSRIs bind to proteins and are widely distributed throughout the body, including the brain, whereas they are lipophilic. Metabolism and elimination takes place mainly in the liver and most of the SSRIs produce pharmacologically active metabolites, as demonstrated in Table 3 among with other pharmacology properties of the SSRIs. Table 3 Comparative Pharmacology of SSRIs Tmax 
time to peak plasma level after oral dose, BD. Volume of distribution, T1 half equals elimination half-life. Structural and mechanical differences between the SSRIs. It is recognized that both the position and the type of substitution on an aromatic moiety of the SSRI compounds are important for the higher specificity to cert. Halogen substituents on the aromatic ring are found to be largely responsible for SSRI's specificity to cert, but all SSRIs possess at specific positions halogen atoms, table 2. For the cert protein, however, the structural basis of its specificity for SSRIs is poorly understood. Research has shown that the SSRI halogens all bind to exactly the same halogen binding pocket HBP, within the CERT protein and mutation at this HBP in CERT dramatically reduces the transporter's affinity for SSRIs, as mentioned before SSRIs are rather promiscuous in that they also bind to the homologous NET and DAT, although with much lower affinity than to their principal target CERT. The selectivity of SSRIs for CERT is really interesting where only one or two different functional group substituents are sufficient to convert an SSRI into a norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, NRI, with higher affinity to NE. SSRI antidepressants all have the same mechanism of action and are at least tenfold more selective for 5-HT reuptake inhibition than for NE reuptake inhibition. However, despite the sharing of the same mechanism of action, SSRIs differ in their potency and selectivity in inhibiting 5-HT reuptake and many of them have important effects on other transporters and receptors. SSRIs are structurally diverse with clear variations in their pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic profiles, which leads to differences among them in their half-lives, clinical activity, adverse effects and drug interactions, which explains the differences in their efficacy and tolerability among patients. However, all SSRIs are clinically equal when it comes to their efficacy over time. Table 2 Comparison of the Chemical Properties of SSRI Drugs Structure Activity Relationship, SAR Phenoxyphenylpropylamine Derivatives Compounds containing an aeroloxypropylamine motif in their structure, demonstrated in Figure 3a, are known as monoamine reuptake inhibitors. Drugs containing this privileged structural motif, where R1 and R2 or ARYLS are heteroarils, preferable phenyl, possess a selectivity profile for net insert while compounds containing a substituent in the two. Position of the aroxyl ring of the structure, figure 3b, exhibits selectivity and high affinity for net, and are therefore generally SNRIs, compounds having substituent in the four feet. Position exhibits selectivity and high affinity for cert and are therefore generally SSRIs, e.g. fluoxetine and peroxetine. Fluoxetine is a racemic mixture of R and S fluoxetine where both enantiomers contribute to its biological activity. Since mono substitution in the 4 para position of the phenoxy group, figure 4 results in selective inhibition of 5 HT reuptake, a desubstitution, i.e., 2, 3, or 2, 4 substitution therefore results in a loss of cert selectivity. Fluoxetine has the widest spectrum of activity since it is the least cert selective of all the SSRIs. Fluoxetine also has a 5-HT2C antagonist activity where it blocks the 5-HT activity of 5-HT2C receptors enhancing the release of both NE and DA. A 5-HT2C antagonist do not only help out with therapeutic effects of fluoxetine but also the tolerability of the drug. The advantage of being 5-HT2C antagonist is that it has a stimulatory effect and many patients have experienced an increase in energy, concentration and focus and a decrease in fatigue from the very first dose. The stimulant activity of 5-HT2C antagonist can however, be a disadvantage for patients with agitation, insomnia and anxiety. Another feature of fluoxetine is a weak NE reuptake inhibition which can have clinical effect in higher doses. Fluoxetine also has a long half-life which can reduce withdrawal symptoms which are characteristic for some SSRIs after abrupt discontinuation, but it also means that it takes a long time to clear the drug and its active metabolite after discontinuing fluoxetine treatment. 
Peroxetine is a constrained structural analog of fluoxetine where the linear phenylpropylamine group of fluoxetine has been folded into a piperidine ring figure 5. The compound has the possibility of four stereoisomers because it contains two chiral centers, but one of them, the 3S, 4R, isomer, is marketed as peroxetine. Research has shown that stereochemical factors affect affinity of the molecule for CERT where substitution into the two-ortho position of either aromatic rings decreases affinity for rat CERT by as much as 10 to 100 times, where the greatest loss occurs in the phenoxy ring. Peroxetine is the most potent SSRI drug available, but it is less selective for CERT than fluvoxamine and sertraline. Peroxetine also has weak net inhibition which could contribute to its efficacy in depression, especially at higher doses. As demonstrated in Table 2, peroxetine also inhibits the NOS enzyme which could be the reason for its sexual dysfunction adverse effect, especially in men. Peroxetine shows the highest affinity for muscarinic receptors of all the SSRIs which results in weak anticholinergic activity and therefore undesirable adverse effects. While scientists were trying to create a new antidepressant to inhibit the NE reuptake, they accidentally synthesized two new compounds, named talopram and talsupram. The two compounds were not marketed in spite of being potent SNRIs because of the fact that number of suicide attempts were reported in clinical trials. With minor changes to the chemical structure of talipram, figure 6, including a single 6-cyano substitution, scientists were able to convert talipram into a potent SSRI, called citalopram. But citalopram can also be viewed as a constrained analog of peroxetine. Citalopram has the second most selectivity for CERT, no effects on NE or DA reuptake and nor does it have affinity to other neuroreceptors. Citalopram is composed of two enantiomers, R, and S, which are mirror images of each other figure 7. Researches has shown that nearly all the activity resides in the S enantiomer and that R citalopram actually counteracts the action of the S enantiomer. The combination of the two enantiomers is known as racemic citalopram and has weak antihistaminic properties that reside in the R enantiomer. Solution to improve the properties of racemic citalopram is to remove the unwanted R enantiomer. The resulting drug is better known as escitalopram, but it is composed of only the pure active S plus isomer. This change appears to remove the antihistaminic properties of the drug. By removing the R enantiomer, the lowest dose of escitalopram becomes more efficacious and faster onset than comparable dose of citalopram, where escitalopram has twice the activity of citalopram and is at least 27 times more potent than the R enantiomer. Escitalopram is therefore the only SSRI drug for which pure cert inhibition is responsible for almost all of its pharmacological action. Escitalopram is the newest and most selective inhibitor of the SSRIs and is today considered the best tolerated SSRI. Aminotetraline derivatives Tometraline, a compound synthesized in 1978 by Pfizer, was shown to be a potent NE and DA reuptake inhibitor with animal studies. Later on a surprisingly substantial enhancement of blocking activity of 5-HT uptake was achieved by adding chlorine atoms at C3 and C4 to the structure of tometraline, resulting in plus trans 1R 4S N-methyl 4-PHENYL1 aminotetraline, a potent but non-selective uptake blocker. The plus cis 1s 4S isomer, one of four compounds diastereomers, however, exhibited significantly more selective and potent 5-HT uptake inhibiting activity compared to the other three diastereomers, where the 4-phenyl ring favors attachments at 5-HT uptake sites. The compound was named sertraline figure 8. Although sertraline appears to differ structurally from the other SSRIs, it has a phenylaminotetraline in its structure, in which the diphenylpropylamine nucleus has been forced into a stiff bicyclic ring system. Sertraline is the second most potent inhibitor of 5-HT reuptake which has two very interesting characteristics that distinguish it i.e. sertralines 1. Inhibiting effect on DAD and NET and 2. The binding to sigma-1 sigma receptor in CNS. The DAD and NET inhibition is controversial because of much weaker inhibition which it has, compared to CERT inhibition. Sertraline has about 60 times more potent inhibition potential on 5-HT than either NE or DA reuptake. 
It is possible that only modest inhibition of dad and net is needed to cause an increase in energy, motivation and concentration, especially when added to other activities such as CERT inhibition. Sertraline has also been found to have high affinity for the CNS sigma-1 receptors. A role of the sigma-1 site in the pharmacological action of sertraline may exist, but the significance of sertraline affinity for sigma-1 receptors remains unclear. Binding of SSRIs to CERT protein The molecular basis for SSRIs function, including their binding mode and molecular mechanism of 5-HT reuptake inhibition in CERT, is not fully understood and is a matter of debate. Such information is very important for the understanding of essential aspects of the drug's action, ranging from selectivity profile to therapeutic efficacy and the development of new and improved drugs that target the human CERT. The three-dimensional 3D structure of CERT is not known and has been the main obstacle for elucidation of the structural mechanism of the human CERT. Comparative molecular modeling have been used in research to create structural models of human CERT in complex with its ligand but has not given good results because of low phylogenetic and functional similarity between human CERT and available template proteins. However the 3D structure of some bacterial homologous transporters like the leucine transporter LUT, is known. The human CERT, NET and DAT are all members of the neurotransmitter, sodium symporter NSS, protein family. CERT contains approximately 630 amino acids that are predicted to form 12 transmembrane alpha helixes TMs, which are connected with intra- and extracellular loops ILs and ELs. LUT, which is also a member of the NSS family that functions as an amino acid transporter, was crystallized from Aquifex Eolicus by Yamashita et al., and shares 20-25% identity in primary structure with the human neurotransmitter transporters. Therefore, the crystal structure of LUT and its transport mechanism have been proven to be a good model system for the study of NSS proteins. Although detailed transport mechanism of the NSS proteins is not fully understood, it is clear that in order for transport to occur a rearrangement of large proteins needs to take place. LUT has been co-crystallized with sertraline and R and S fluoxetine where the SSRIs have been found to bind as non-competitive inhibitors in a vestibule binding site, can be looked at as a second binding site, which is separated from the drug's binding site by the site chains of the two aromatic amino acids of the extracellular gate of the transport protein. The halogens on the SSRI's chemical structure all bind to the same HBP within LUT and interact with similar amino acids, but the amino acid sequence in the HBP is highly preserved between LUT and CERT. That suggests that in the human CERT the SSRIs also bind both at the same position and with similar manner, which is a key feature making the SSRIs selective for CERT. Conversely, there could be differences in their binding where the other part of the drug molecule will likely bind to CERT in a different way, given the diversity in their structure. The localization of the vestibular binding site, as the primary SSRI binding site in CERT is, is however controversial since some research has shown that the SSRIs work in competitive manner by binding to the drug's binding site, not to the second binding site. Binding of fluoxetine to lute protein both enantiomers of fluoxetine show a similar affinity for CERT. However, NE, 5-HT selective ratio gives the impression that the S enantiomer is 100 times more selective for CERT inhibition than the R enantiomer. The R plus stereoisomer is almost 8 times more potent an inhibitor of CERT together with a longer duration of action than the S minus isomer, S minus norfluoxetine metabolite is 7 times more potent an inhibitor on 5-HT transporter than R plus metabolite, with selectivity ratio almost equivalent to that of S fluoxetine. Both enantiomers of fluoxetine bind to the extracellular vestibule on the LUT protein is such a way that the three fluorine atoms of the methylphenoxy ring bond bind into the HBP that is formed by LUT25, GLI26, LUT29, ARD30 and TIR108. The halogens additionally make van der Waals interaction with LUT29 and TIR108, where the S enantiomer additionally binds to Phi253 and makes van der Waals contact with it among with previously mentioned amino acids. 
Because of the S enantiomers opposite chirality to the R enantiomer the rest of the molecule is reversed in the HBP, where the amine tail points towards the extracellular space and interacts with the N-terminal of LU-400, ASP-401 and ALA-319 amino acids which are a part of the TM-10. In this LUT-bound form the complex is rather rigid. The methylphenoxy ring rotates about the O5C6 bond by 46 degrees for the R enantiomer and 16 degrees for the S enantiomer, but rigidity in the molecular structure indicates that the drug maintains its low energy configuration upon binding to its protein target. Binding of sertraline to lute protein Sertraline binds to the same extracellular vestibule in lute as fluoxetine where the two chlorine atoms on the phenyl ring bind to HBP formed by lute 25, Gly 26, lute 29, ARD 30, Tier 108, EL 111 and Phi 253. The halogens additionally make van der Waals contact with lute 29, Tier 108 and Phi 253. The tetralin tetrahydronaphthalene on the other end of sertraline's structure is in contact with LU-400, ASP-401 and THR-409, which are a part of the TM-10, as well as the molecule interacts with ALA-319 of the EL-4 hairpin loop and ARD-30 and GIN-34 of the TM-1, where the amine tail points towards the cytoplasm. The bound sertraline molecule has its dichlorophenyl ring rotated about the C4-C13 bond by 180 degrees compared to the free drug. Binding of escitalopram to human cert protein Anderson et al. were able to generate a model of the S citalopram binding site in human cert by combining mutational analysis and comparative modeling where they found out that ASN 177 and Phi 341 were key determinants for S citalopram potency and high affinity inhibition in addition to Tier 95, ASP 98, EL 172 and ESSER 438 previously described, where three functional groups of the inhibitor structure bind to the transporters amino acids, S. Citalopram is positioned as that the cyanophthalane, fluorophenyl and methylaminophorpal moieties occupy three different sub-pockets within the CERT binding pocket. EL-172 and Phi-341 are likely not in direct contact with the drug molecule, but they are very important for controlling alignment of the inhibitor. What came after the SSRIs? After the discovery of SSRIs the interest for newer antidepressant drugs with broader mechanism of action increased. Venlafaxine Effexor, was introduced in 1993 as the first drug in the SNRI serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor class of antidepressants. SNRIs differ from SSRIs in that they block the reuptake of both 5-HT and NA. Today SNRIs along with SSRIs are the most widely used antidepressants. In some studies, SNRIs demonstrated slightly higher antidepressant efficacy than the SSRIs, response rates 63.6% versus 59.3%. There is still controversy whether SNRIs are more efficacious than SSRIs. See also Serotonin Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors Monoamine reuptake inhibitors Second-generation antidepressant Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors References, <references>